Hello, I'm Guillermo Martinez, and today I'm going to talk uh, about something very important, uh, very highly ceremonial, something that I don't ever have never heard anyone talk about, and this instrument is uh, extremely important, and that is called Atecocoli, also known as Tisitzli in the Mayan language, and that's the shell. And I have mine here. Mine is a uh, Pacific Triton and it's in a beautiful macrame bag that I got in Japan because this instrument is highly revered not only with Native American cultures especially along the coast but pretty much every island culture so Pacific Islander Japanese um, anywhere where you can find these shells you could um, you'll find that they used them at the beginning of every ceremony and that's why it's important because it's used it's the very first thing that you do is you blow the conch or the tecocoli to call in the ancestors and this has this has to do because this has to do with uh, um, I remember reading about the Hobi the Hopi creation stories about how the world was created and nothing moved, everything was inanimate, everything was basically frozen. Or, you know. And then the hero twins, who are, there's one at each pole, north and south pole, and they're there to, to keep the world in motion and moving. And they're, they're supposed to be there till the end of time. And in, before they, they took their positions respectively at the North and South Pole is they sounded the world into creation. And in my, my you know, just kind of guessing, I would say it would be, the, it was a definite, probably a conch shell. Now what frequency? It could be the own frequency. And, uh, you know, once you hear a shell, you, you know, you, you'll tell me. But, um, so this is the way they would carry them. The Japanese, the Yamabushi, the mountain priests, they would carry them in their in their these cases so they can, because they'll be hiking and there are certain places where they would blow them. And they usually keep them in, they blow them while they're in here. But I'm gonna take mine out so we can see. Now, in Japan, you wouldn't find this because this is only found in the Pacific Ocean, the Pacific Triton. And this is like exactly like the ones you'd find in museums in Mexico City has this creamy color and pretty much always had a mouthpiece. Mine here has a bison horn, the tip of a, a North American bison uh, fixed on here. These could also be wood or ceramic or in the Japanese culture, they use metal, uh, metal. And so they're very much like the mo modern trumpet of today. It's basically like a trumpet. If you un un unfurl this, it'd be just a long tube that started small and goes big. And um, this is one that easily acquired. This is the Australian Triton. And that's the type of shell you would want to use. You can always use a helmet, one called a helmet shell, um, which looks like a helmet. Those work well. The, um, the pink ones that most people have in their bathrooms work well, as long as they don't have any holes. This one's a perfect specimen, has no holes on the sides where, and that hole is usually so they can get at to the the animal that's inside or that lives inside here and that's so they can consume it because you know conch meat is something people love to eat and uh, to keep it in this condition it's a lot harder you know a lot harder to to do this it's much easier just to make a hole and, and take the animal out and so in another video I will be probably for the patreon I will cut this one or one of these and just to show how to do this because it's something that that I, you know, I learned, you know, uh, I taught myself, and um, this is one from Nepal, which is, you can see, very ornate with the, the silver work and turquoise and coral, and I also had one like this that was beautifully carved with Mayan glyphs, and unfortunately it was coveted by somebody else and disappeared, so out there in the world is one of something with my my name and all my information according to the the Mayan calendar carved into the shell by someone who does this kind of work and 
I don't know where it is anymore. But anyways, how to play it. Well, basically it's a trumpet, so you do, you do, you play it just like a trumpet, and that's with a purse in your mouth, and kind of rise in your lips. Now, depending on the size of the shell, determines how loose or how tight your mouth is going to be. A smaller shell, very tight. Bigger shell, and just, and didgeridoo, it's the same technique. Didgeridoo is a lot looser. And uh, I know it sounds funny, but you're going to have to practice. So basically, you want to get your mouth. You can do it in the front or on the side. You know, you got to find out, and you're going to have to just practice and, you know, get that, that rasp your lips and, and, and find the right amount, tightness, or looseness that, that's required for the shell. And that's... That's kind of more or less what I did for this one. Okay? And so it's really important to learn to practice and do this well because if you are called to do a ceremony, the worst thing to do is, you know, trying to figure it out. So, you know, if you're doing a ceremony, you know, you know, it's, I remember some people, some ceremonies, people are like, ah, you, you just, Go over there, back up a bit. Get the ones, the ones that know how to do it well, they put them up, you know, in the front. And But like I said, the beginning of a ceremony. Now, I'll play this Tibetan one. This one, actually, you have to play with your hands inside. You hear a different sound altogether. And just so you know, some of these were actually outfitted with holes. I would say probably around here or maybe back here. You find them in museum collections. And it's actually because they were, you could actually play notes. And they would have two, one hole, two, three, up to three holes. And very much like the modern trumpet of today. Now, um, I remember the first time I heard um, like a, a set of music, a ceremonial set of music or you know, hard to, I mean, I guess we could use the word sound bath, but um, for for me, it's a, that's kind of a whole new concept, but, you know, back in the day, when I performed regularly with the group I was in, we did pre-Columbian music, we would also go out, and when people from Mexico would come, we would obviously go and support them and go hear them perform or do their, their ceremony, and it's basically a sound bath. But, you know, using all ancient instruments and, you know, going for hours. Um, but there's, uh, I remember Tribu doing um, a piece where they did, um, first they started with high frequencies, all very extremely high whistles. And literally felt like you were floating. And then they did, followed by, by conch shells. And if you get different sizes, you can, you can do like an orchestrated piece where, you know, you know, the low tones, mid and high, because you can, you can manipulate the tones. As you can see, this is a very good shell, easy to work, easy to work with. So you get high tones, and, you know, with practice, I can probably get a lot more out of it. But, um, so, uh, as, an, as a musical instrument, it's very, very valuable, very useful. As a ceremonial instrument, uh, if you're any kind of ceremonialist, you're going to have to get a shell. And, um, unfortunately, the ones I've seen, like, online are, are horrific. So I think it's kind of my duty to, you know, to put this video on on how to cut it yourself and how to prepare it yourself and maybe even add a mouthpiece. Um, because, yeah, it's an important tool. You're going to need it. And, you know, it's, they're hard to find, you know, in a, unless you get one from the Japanese, the Yamabuchi ones, those are quite nice and outfitted with mouthpieces and 
and they don't have to have a mouthpiece, but the, if you're going to play directly on the shell, then that should be done properly so it doesn't cut your mouth. And there's certain precautions that you have to take in cutting shell and that you can't breathe the dust. You have to work with it wet, so a wet saw is, is useful in, in just being aware of the dust and not breathing it in. And then once it's done, you know, and you sand it and polish it and you have an instrument that will last your whole life. So I uh, hope you find this useful. I'm going to go out and do a, a follow-up video here real quick. We're going to go outside and uh, play this in a, in a ceremonial way, in the way you would call in the ancestors. Typically you would do it, uh, I do it four times in each direction, east, then to the west, then to the south, then to the north, and then we go above to the upper world, and then to the earth mother. And you can do one, one, you know, one, um, one tone each, each direction, or you can do four or whatever you feel like it. Some ceremonies, it, you know, you could, no one's paying attention to numbers and they're just, everybody's going at it. And, uh, but um, anyways, so I hope you found this useful. And uh, yeah, it's going to put some of you on a quest to, to acquire your, your Atacocoli or Tesitzli. This one's mine. I, I found this in, in Ensenada at a, at a shell shop. They had it in the back and the guy didn't want to sell it. But, you know, I talked to him and, you know, and I said, you know, just name your price. And because by then I had, I had mine stolen, so, and uh, I was able to acquire this. And do expect to pay, you know, over $100 for a good size shell or more. So just so you know, they're not 10 or 20 bucks. But in the meantime, I found these. You can put one of these on your altars, small shells that are, this one's, uh, you know, more like a conch. And you can have that on your altar. And just so you know, when it's going to be used, it's on the altar facing up. And after it's being used, you put them down. So that way people know they're, they're done. The instrument knows it's not being used anymore. But uh, when it's on your altar and it's just sitting there, you can have it in any position. But when you go do a ceremony up, before the ceremony, after, they go down. Okay. So thank you very much for uh, listening to me. And hopefully this information is useful, especially for those who, who like to do ceremony and, and work with sound. These are, this is a, probably one of the most important instruments that you should have in your arsenal because this definitely calls in the ancestors and brings them around and lets them aware, be aware that the ceremony is happening, some, they're being called and summoned. And um, so you take care and have a good day. Talaso Comate.